So many people have been commenting on my videos asking for advice and strategies when it comes to my personal experience with business and finance. And so what I want to do is introduce to you today my first ever interview that I've done. It was with Alexi, a business consultant. He had some questions for me and if you have any further questions or curious about anything at all regarding the interview or anything uh, on my channel, feel free to comment down below. You can ask anything. I respond to all the comments. So here is the long awaited interview for you. Enjoy. But to be honest, I'm, I'm quite excited that we just talk, you know, from different continents, you know, just this mere fact you know, already makes me. That is true. You're in what, what country or where are you from? I, I'm, I'm in Switzerland. Okay. That's in the middle of Europe, uh, this tiny country. I originally I come from Russia, from Moscow area, but then I was studying in Germany for MBA and then eventually I found myself in Switzerland like a year ago. And what city are you currently located? I'm in New York in the, in the States. Wow, well, cool, cool. Which part of New York? Long this Island. Is. So it's about oh. an hour away from New York City. But still, it's a, it's a cool place. I've been, I've been once to New York and uh, that was in the middle of the winter before Very visiting cold. Miami yeah. and I was thinking, why couldn't I go directly to Miami? <laughs> because the city was amazing, but uh, the wind was so cold from the ocean and so wet at the same time. Oh yeah, it's very cold, especially in the winter in uh, New York. What do you do a part of the YouTube channel? I, I watched uh, some of your videos. I like mm -hmm. them. Yeah, so with the YouTube channel, uh, you know, it's still growing, of course, but I cover everything from mindset, entrepreneurship, finance, investing, uh, from my strategy and uh, from what I've learned from others and uh, people that I've looked up to. So uh, really a little bit of everything on that channel. It's uh, really for anyone in that in that field. Mm -hmm. And do you have any other uh, types of activities apart from the YouTube channel, like a daily job or some projects or something? So um, I graduated in high school a couple of years ago, uh, but I didn't. I decided not to go to college. Uh, that was just my decision. So I've been working on my business and uh, pretty much living the entrepreneurial lifestyle. Cool, cool. So you probably tried uh, some projects uh, in your life, right? So within this few last at least last two years. Yeah, and uh, you know, going back even as young as I would say, uh, starting at like 10, 11 years old, um, you know, I've tried everything online, tried many different things, drop shipping and selling just random things around the household. Uh, but now I'm, you know, doing a, a business full time, so I'm very grateful to be where I am. Mm -hmm. And so the current business that do that you say you do full time is is it this YouTube channel itself, or is something related to it? It's affiliate marketing, internet marketing. Um, so yeah, I promote like digital products and, and market them and uh, make commissions on them. But uh, the YouTube channel is just something on the side that, of course, I'm hoping to build up. And of course, that'll be a, another stream of income on my side. Well, it sounds uh, good to me that you did not go to the college, to be honest, <laughs> because for me, for some more traditionally minded people, you know, conservative people, that might be strange to hear, but. Uh, uh, I'm on the other side of this extreme mm -hmm. because I had uh, three university educations, three degrees, but uh, just to understand that uh, they are very useful, let's say, for a kind of a conservative career in an office uh, or some, you know, some careers like doctors where without education you are not even allowed legally to, to act. But um, all these universities uh, that I've been studying, you know, uh, engineering, uh, law and business administration, they were uh, so academic and so theoretical and they are designed by uh, academic people. Is it, is it correct way to say in English, Ac academic people, academicians? A academic, yeah, that's... Uh, academic, yeah. 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 And, 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 and the to everything is taught by, or most of it is taught by these kind of people and um, that, that, that's maybe interesting for those who are into scientific understanding of the world, you know, for those who are into this in science and uh, academia, but from a practical point of view, there was a, very little, to be honest, <laughs> I could use. Well, there was, of course, there are connections you one can make and so on, but and it's nice to have a diploma, right? But the price for this, I mean, money-wise, but also time-wise, effort-wise, uh, I think it's for most of the people, it's not worth doing, and uh, I'm happy you were the one to find enough courage not to proceed with the flow and, you know, do your own stuff. Mm -hmm. It's definitely not for everyone, and, uh, you know, when you look at the numbers and you look at what's happening, uh, the uh, degree is really becoming more and more a worthless piece of paper, 
and uh, the people that are teaching the the subjects have no experience themselves, and uh, it's it's really becoming very bad. People are drowning in debt, and students are just not being able to afford the price of living. Yeah, and uh, the 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 other aspect, if we started to talk about this, is that uh, uh, our world is changing so much with the technology and everything, right? And uh, these kind of programs, they, they become outdated very quickly, very quickly. That's true. And, you know, you look at cars and cell phones and they've all advanced over the years, but the classroom is still the same setup. Yeah, but I mean, cars and cell phones is one thing, but even I mean, the jobs, I mean, the, the marketing jobs, they changed completely 10 years ago with social media. They changed 20 years ago completely with internet uh, coming to everyone's home. 30 years ago, they changed a lot with uh, with TV, you know, these huge TVs and the mobile phones and stuff coming. Um, but how do you how do you learn? Uh, how do you educate yourself when you don't go to formal uh, for formal education? What do you, what what vehicles do you use for this? Right. Uh, so you know, it's really just learning from other people, and a lot of it is also experience as well. Uh, so I've I, you know I've read many books, I've taken many courses. And there's, of course, a lot of free information online as well. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with just getting free information online. Uh, you Absolutely. Know, so, so much information on YouTube and Google that uh, really you could learn uh, decades worth of information uh, just in a couple of Google searches. So uh, it's really some of the experience and then some I, I've learned on my own. But with these courses that you mentioned, was it like a, a video course? Uh, I mean, was it useful in a way for you? Right. So, yeah, there were sales courses and uh, marketing courses and how to use social media to advertise and market. Um, so I just got little tidbits of tons of different details and information over the years and that I've acquired and tested and implemented myself and uh, really just kind of created my own uh, curation. Yeah, I'm asking because some people's um, feedback is or some people's fears maybe that it's difficult to kind of self-educate when there is no like a classroom and you have to can it be motivated, you know, disciplined? I mean, what, what would you think of this? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, you know, I, one of my favorite quotes is uh, from Jim Rohn that, uh, you know, formal ed education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Um, so, <laughs> nice. Yeah, it is one of my favorite quotes. I love it. So, you know, even people that graduate from Harvard, uh, they're learning from people with no business experience uh, that are just reading from a textbook, and that's really all they're getting is they're just memorizing vocabulary. Mm -hmm. um, so just because, you know, you have an Ivy League degree doesn't necessarily mean that you have uh, you're adequate for business. Um, so, yeah. you know, definitely learning on your own and screwing up and failing as many times is, is part of the process. Oh, business is definitely like on the on the other continuum, uh, on the other part of the continuum from uh, yeah, this kind of education and uh, for, for, for formalities, formal education for many, many years. And especially, I'm I'm shocked and and I'm uh, and uh, about uh, the price, the effort it takes, you know, this uh, mm -hmm. the formal education, informal university education. Because I don't think it's necessarily bad to have it or to have a diploma. But I mean, what we what we invest in this, especially in terms of time when we are young, you know, and uh, um, and and spend this time in classes, that's. It's unbelievable, and uh, when I hear people find courage uh, to uh, to go with the flow, uh, I feel very happy to be honest. Uh, there's so many, and I, especially here in Switzerland, it's a very conservative, it's very rich but very conservative country, and um, many professions you are not allowed to do without education. I mean, like in, in the U.S., it would be like a medical professions. But here, almost everything. I mean, you aren't allowed to go and do a haircut without education, or right. you know, to be a hairmaster, or, or not even I don't know, almost any profession. I I think even for cleaning, they would <laughs> invent some kind of courses. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, trade school is uh, you know another alternative for people that don't want to do the traditional four-year college. Um, so for people that are you know thinking of not doing the the traditional route. Uh, going to a trade school and becoming mm -hmm. a plumber, electrician, something of that nature, uh, that's yeah. totally fine. Uh, but yeah, going back to you know the time spent and invested uh, when it comes to getting your degree, 
Uh, some people stay at school for up to 10 years, and that same 10 years could have been used to build a business, build something on the side. Yeah, and I feel bad uh, that uh, about the situations when, um, you know, very often people go to, to, to college or to university being very young, and they are not so, you know, 16, 17, 18 years old, 19, they, they are not sometimes um, like strong enough to to stand to, to stand on, on on their beliefs and there are parents who support them and they are dependent on them or there is a society around with friends and and neighbors and they all say oh go to college go to college and maybe at the parents time that made much more sense than nowadays I don't know that's very true uh, there's a ton of societal pressure that's been put on uh, you know people especially younger kids are Thing that they have to be forced to do the college, get a car, have to be married by this age, buy a house, and uh, they're just piling up all the debt that uh, they cannot take on. Yeah, and you you mentioned it already twice that it's important to post the videos uh, consistently, right? What do you mean? Is like an every day to have a video or every week? Uh, you know how often you post will mostly depend on what kind of uh, channel you're going. If you're doing daily vlogs, then uh, you know daily vlogs mean posting every day Daily um, yeah. Daily right day. you know another problem I see people is what they'll do when they're starting out uh, initially is they'll over promise um, so they'll t you know have a bunch of ideas that they're ready to make and they'll make you know five videos in their first week but then when it comes time the next few weeks they run out of ideas and now they're you know so you have to make sure what you can deliver is, is consistent so right now I'm doing a, a video every four days and I've been sticking to that uh, plan for um, mm -hmm. about a year now. So it's about uh, t roughly twice a week that you publish it online, right? Exactly, right. That's a lot. That's that's quite often, and that's quite often. And I, I, I'm just going through this uh, struggle now personally um, because um, one thing is when you watch somebody's video, so you think, oh, it's so easy to do, right? You just right. a guy talks on the camera, but uh, when you when you try to do it yourself, you realize you know, how much effort it takes to find the time, the mood, to set everything up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah. and especially if you're in school, you're a student, or you're working a, a full-time job, uh, the time you know, is limited for you. Uh, I, that's part of why I started it, is that knowing that you know, I, I do have an online business that I could take with me anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. That is partially why I started my channel, because I know I, I could have the time and uh, put aside the time. So you have a you have a content plan in a way, right? If you say you you know what you will do, you don't have to necessarily plan for months from now, uh, but at least having uh, you know the next couple of weeks of videos planned out, uh, definitely that will save you some aggravation and um, will help you keep that momentum going. But what's your approach? Do you film several videos in one shooting, or you always film just one video? When I first started out, um, I thought, oh, I'll just film everything at once and you know just post it out throughout the month, mm -hmm. but. Uh, that's a, that's very tough. Uh, it takes mm -hmm. a long time to edit and export Virtually and impossible. come up with the idea. So right now I'm just going as I go and uh, doing mm -hmm. one, and I'll I'll usually film uh, the video a couple of days before I I publish it, edit mm -hmm. it the next day, and then publish it like that that late late night. So um it it's it's seen as being published uh, early that day. But do you see some benefit to maybe not film like many videos in one uh, day? But maybe to film um, several videos in advance in order to be able, let's say, to handle situations like if you if you're sick with the flu, let's say, or if you travel somewhere right. and then you can't film really like the whole week long. Right. In that scenario, you know, if you if you know that you're going to be traveling or there might be mm -hmm. parts of the year or parts of the month where you're not you're just going to not be able to, then uh, you know definitely if you can. But you know it is tough. Um, you know depending on what kind of content you're making. It takes a long time to edit it and a long time to uh, c come up with the idea for the video. So if you can do that, then definitely. But right now, knowing that you know I, I am working from home, uh, mm -hmm. I'm just going going with it as I go. And with the editing, you do you do it yourself or you ask some freelancer? I edit all the videos myself. Um, oh, wow. I, I actually took uh, in high school. Uh, I have some experience in like movie making and and mm -hmm. editing. So. I, that was essentially the only thing I learned from school that I've been able to implement today. Uh, are, are there any tricks there or any any ideas that you would recommend to, to do with, with the editing? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I'm not a uh, master movie maker, but um, as far as editing, 
I just use uh, some free software that's good enough and uh, mm -hmm. I just chop it up and uh, I just kind of follow a formula of putting, um, you'll see if you watch my content, like I'll, I'll usually just put in like funny clips or GIFs in um, yeah. and then at the end I'll have my end screen. And I've just been following that same formula. Uh, in the future, I'll, I'll definitely make different kinds of content. I'll probably do vlog style videos and longer mm -hmm. content. Uh, you know, maybe if, if I'm doing more interviews, I'll upload those as well. But right now, it's just kind of like the same format. You can kind of get an idea of, of what I do. But do you think you would feel comfortable also with the vlogs? Because I realize it's a bit of a different style. You know, one thing is to film yourself and at home, and the other one is to you know, go around the city, film the life. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I don't have much experience in vlogging, uh, but from what I understand, you know, you don't necessarily have to have the most interesting life or you yeah. know, have something going on every day, as long as you can just kind of visually show something that you're doing, um, you know, even while you're at home, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be outside of your, outside of your home, uh, but if, as long as you can visually show something and that kind of document your day in life, uh, then, you know, you could definitely move forward with, with vlogging. And you said you have a... Um uh a lot of topics like what you want to film in the future but how do you choose choose these topics for the videos that's a good question um you know i'll, I'll definitely will look at what other youtubers are doing but you do mm -hmm. want to try to be original so um it, it does you do have to be rather creative and um i i would say i'm a pretty creative person uh so i do come up with a lot of them you know sometimes i'll come up with an idea in the middle of the night and i have to put it in my notes on my phone. Um, yeah, I've seen, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of your videos. They are not um, like uh, anyone else is doing. I mean, I mean, these topics I've not seen covered by anyone else. Right. To be honest. Yeah, so a lot of them are, are pretty pretty darn original. Uh, some of them, you, you definitely see duplicates of them on YouTube, uh, but a lot of them I do put some effort in and creativity in to uh, make them as original as possible. Um, uh, you know, one of the things I'm doing is appealing to more of a broader niche so it's not just like I'm focusing on solely investing or solely sales. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it's, it's a very broad channel mm -hmm. um, where a lot of people uh, could really find liking to it. Yeah. And, but do you see also the benefit of uh, sharing with your viewers a bit more about, uh, about you, about your, uh, your, your, your life, or is more, or you, you feel it's just pure uh, educational content is better? Mm -hmm. Um, I've made some videos so far, you know, I, one of them most recently, um, I, I made a video on the like five best financial decisions that I've made uh, mm -hmm. in my short time on, on the planet. Uh, but yeah, some, sometimes um, it's more so education, but you know, definitely down the road, I'll, I'll definitely put in more so uh, perhaps like vlogging, like I mentioned, and uh, personal experience will definitely be in there as I, uh, one of the goals is to uh, start investing in real estate. Um, so that will that will definitely be on the channel in uh, some time from now. Yeah, because when I when I watch uh, some interesting video, I'm always curious at the back of my mind what what is this person, what was his life? I mean, uh, who is who is, um, who is it? What's he's doing? And uh, I mean, apart of all this valuable content that I get, and um, that's that's just a human nature, I guess, to be curious about uh, people you kind of watch or talk to and this is kind of a connection is the viewers right right and uh you know y there's nothing wrong with posting that kind of content but mm -hmm. it is it is the valuable content the 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 information that you can provide that is what get people gets people to watch and it's kind of how you make that noise you know there's so much noise uh on social media and the internet that you have to kind of stand out and just try to try to provide as much upfront valuable as possible and then once you do have that following um, you know, then you could probably post more kinds of um, personal content where you're connecting with fans and you have an audience like that. Yeah, I agree absolutely. But uh, it does not have to be either or. I mean, it can be incorporated right. one to another, right? Like what you did, it's about investments, but also about your investments, about your decisions and how you do your decisions. Definitely. Um, so, yeah, you know, like I mentioned before, uh, throwing in some of that relevant content and throwing in evergreen content. Mm -hmm. Um, that that's definitely part of the equation as well. And how does it work for you when you uh, choose a, a topic for the video? You decide to film. Do you have a script? Do you have some like bullet points, or do you just uh, absolutely do it creatively, or how do you do? Yeah, so I do have some notes that I'll I'll have, and um, you know, kind of memorize chunks of that. But then I'll mm -hmm. throw in 
uh, just kind of off off the beat um, knowledge and, and information that I could have, you know, just in the back of my mind. Um, mm-hmm. You know, because it's not like something that you rehearse for for so long, like you would, uh, you know, rehearsing for like a movie or something. Um, you know, a lot of times, a lot of it is in, improv and uh, just kind of improvising on that spot on the spot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I also believe that uh, on the one hand side, having like a just a prompter and read from from it, it's a bit um, mechanic. It, it can be a mechanic, right? Or mm-hmm. technical and not so so natural. But on the other hand, uh, if I just put a camera on myself and have a question, I can answer something. Of course, I can I, I can talk about virtually anything. But um, would I just wonder would that be like like the best answer I would give if I if I had a minute to think of it. Or would it be like a full answer as I had a kind of a list just of a few with a few topics to mention in this in this answer? That's, that's what I'm asking myself as well so to construct it. Yeah, so I would say a little bit of both. Um, you know, the problem with just put, turning on the camera and just trying to come mm-hmm. up with something on the spot and just, you know, talking uh, from out of nowhere, you know, you, you're probably going to forget things that you might have wanted to say and yeah, look sure. back you look back and say oh, I wish I should have thrown that in and uh, you know it might not be as interesting because you don't have many things to cover um, you know you get lost sometimes just in, in your own words so uh, I would definitely say have a have some sort of structure have some sort of a script you know whether that's just some bullet points or uh, you know full complete sentences or paragraphs and then just throw in and throw in some of your own opinion so a little bit of both definitely and, and the other thing I would expect from you uh, be, being quite strong, since you are into digital marketing, is all this, you know, search engine optimization, the writing proper tags, description. Can you give a couple of advice on this and how to proceed with that? Mm-hmm. Um, so are you referring to more so like uh, how to write copy or? Uh, yeah, how to write the description of the video and the tags. I mean, so that oh, okay. you get more mm-hmm. more viewers, so to say, more attention. Definitely that relevant content is what can cause a viral video. So if you are making videos on topics that are current, currently right now happening, um, so like right here in the U.S., of course, mm-hmm. the uh, you know the 2020 election is coming up. So um, I try to throw in some kind of political videos in there, just kind of keep it fresh. Um, but what you can also do is look at some of your past videos that have done some that have done well. You know, some videos that maybe got a little more views than others, and uh, use tags and descriptions mm-hmm. from that. Uh, but really, you know, the algorithm on YouTube is constantly changing. There isn't one set formula that you, uh, you just kind of have to just kind of bang out content. You don't really have a choice. And just, you know, some videos won't go viral. Some videos will. Some videos will get more views than others. Uh, you just have to be consistent. And in the long term, that, that definitely plays out better. I see. I see. And the, the other question, well, one of the last ones on the technical side I had was about the the comments, I mean, do you encourage people to write comments? Do you answer them? I mean, how do you proceed with that? Yeah, especially more recently in the last few months, um, it, almost all my videos, I try to encourage some sort of, a, of interaction in the comments. So um, I'll ask, you know, someone what their opinion is on the topic or mm-hmm. if they have an experience with, with uh, what I'm discussing in the video. And uh, so then, of course, you know, be getting engaging with them. So I'll, I'll respond to every single comment. If you look at all my videos, I've responded to every single comment I haven't. Yes, I was. I seen this, and then I, I had yeah. a question. I mean, is it really Logan who is responding to this? Because I mean, it must be a lot of effort as well to do this personally, right? It is me. Yeah, I do respond to each one, mm-hmm. uh, but you know, I'll, I'll oftentimes just copy and paste, uh, you know, an answer. Nevertheless, I mean, it takes it takes right, some, right. some effort to do this. So it's it's it feels like like you know to be heard by somebody you watched. To get an answer from this person that feels so so good here, I mean, because then it's like a bit of your attention also touches uh, the viewer. Yeah, and uh, you know, a lot of YouTubers will forget, uh, especially in our kind of niche when we're uh, kind of just focused on the dollars. Is you know, we look at the numbers of views, we'll see 100 views, 200 views, and we we just look at it as sort of like a number or a dollar. We don't really mm-hmm. look at it that there's an actual human be- behind that screen. So. Definitely engaging with with your audience is, is something very powerful and will help you later down the road. Yeah. And what about the the thumbnails? Uh, do you, how how do you approach them? Do you do it yourself as well as editing? Yep, I make all the thumbnails myself, oh. 
and uh, that's yeah that also should have mentioned that before that that definitely adds to the process so uh it is it is tedious it is something that will take a lot of effort but you know as you are growing and get bigger uh that's when you can start to reach out and have a sort of a team that could edit for you and make mm -hmm. those thumbnails but right now i'm doing everything on my own no i'm positively surprised that you have a you do you do this uh, yourself because uh, it means you have very different skills in you with some design skills some editing some filming but talking about the thumbnails i mean do you have some kind of systematic approach some you know something some pattern that you create the thumbnails mm -hmm. so yeah most of the thumbnails you'll see is, is usually a, a, a picture of myself and then just some mm -hmm. quick text uh so you know definitely some tips i can give with the thumbnails and i actually made a whole video uh showing you how to how to make those thumbnails i did oh, a video okay. on it as well um, definitely making them bold and poppy and colorful. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you have to understand that people are watching your content on a on a mobile device with very very small screens, and those thumbnails can get really really tiny. Uh, so making sure that that text is legible and readable, um, and you know even when kind of squeezed down to size. So definitely make sure that text is is readable, and then uh, that your images that you're using are clear and crisp, and uh, that the image kind of pops out at them. So when they're scrolling past the uh, hundreds of videos, you want your thumbnail to definitely kind of stand out. Mm -hmm. So with the technical questions, I mean, you really answered a lot, gave a lot of very valuable tips. But um, to, to wrap it up, I also have some more uh, fundamental or psychological questions. I mean, do you have sometimes like problems to film, for instance, when you're not in mood for many days, or you maybe don't know how, how to talk well, or or you film something and you don't like it and you don't want to publish it. You have something like this. Mm -hmm. um, are you referring to most, uh, more so uh, how I go about making the videos or? or yeah, so I'm saying maybe bit. personal psychological obstacles and how you overcome them in, in this filmmaking process. Right. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, the, the most obvious for any uh, YouTuber starting out is going to be that they're going to feel like giving up and that they, you know, the, they see that it's not working out for them. They're not getting the views. They're not getting uh, the traffic or engagement and they'll just want to drop it completely. And um, so, you know, that's definitely something that I struggled with in, be in the beginning. Uh, but now, you know, it's been pretty consistent. I've been getting uh, a pretty consistent amount of views on every video. Um, so I'm, you know, really the way I look at it is you know, it, you don't have a choice in the matter. Um, you know, you can either make it happen or you won't. And you don't want to look back in, in time from now with regret. So uh, I really just push forward. And, you know, the answer is just committing and, and being disciplined. And do you, since you already have some, quite some audience, do you feel their presence? Do you feel in a way connected to them? Or it's just some numbers for you? You know, this is, I have so and so many subscribers. Right. So, you know, some of those, the, the people that you'll see a comment, um, you know, I don't, I don't know that they've actually uh, consumed the entire piece of content, mm -hmm. uh, but I, de I definitely do have some, some fans, definitely. And, uh, you know, even if just one person is, is impacted by my content, even just one person is, is really taking it in, that's all that matters in the end. Uh, you know, that's kind of the end goal is try to just impact as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And what, uh, I mean, since it's, Kind of an activity is difficult to hide when you have a you only go public and having a youtube channel what is the opinion of people you know i know maybe your family or friends or neighbors i mean do they know you you, you film videos what do you what do they think yeah so you know most of my family and friends they know that i make content and mm -hmm. uh, post on youtube uh that that is definitely something that especially people first starting out that's their biggest struggle is what will people think um and those those words have really uh, crushed a lot of dreams. So mm -hmm. um, when you when you just kind of just ignore what people think, and if you are dealing with negative people in your life, uh, you just try to have to ignore them, or even better, cut them out. Uh, but if you know people that are around you truly care, uh, they don't care you know how many views you get, they don't care how many subscribers you have. Uh, you just have to keep going and and trust your inner instinct that what you're doing is going to end up being a, a good benefit for you, and the end result will be something uh, really outstanding. That sounds very good to me, and actually, it's it's my pleasure, and I appreciate you because uh, normally my videos um, are constructed in the way that I coach someone, but here in this video, you flipped it over, and you gave me a lot of valuable advice on YouTube. Will do, definitely. I appreciate it. Thank you very much again, Logan, and uh, I hope to see you again. Thank you for the video.
Thank you. I want to thank you so much for watching until the end. And like I mentioned, if you have any questions, comments, or curious about anything at all, feel free to comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And if you enjoyed that interview, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash that like button. And if you'd like to see more content on my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well. I post videos every single week for you to enjoy. And if you'd like to be notified every time I upload a new one, so that way you're first in line to see it before anyone else, be sure to hit that notification bell as well. So that you're notified every time I make a new video. See you in the next one.